Good morning, everyone. Talking about, again, uh, signs, the importance of signs. We've seen in John 20, 30 to 31st, that, the, that John, he was very specific. The way that he wrote the book is that we would know that Jesus is, is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that believing in his name, we would have life. So belief is a big thing. We've seen that there were seven signs. We've talked about a few signs already. Today I want to talk about the multiplication of bread and fish because there's something there. That it's on chapter 6. It says that a great multitude followed him because they saw the signs. They saw the evidence. They saw the witness. They saw the testimony. They saw something through the signs and the signs which he performed on those who were diseased. So through the sickness, through the healings, through the manifestation of his power, people begin to believe, people begin to follow him. But we know that this is the biggest crowd that Jesus ever had. We know that Jesus had great compassion. When he saw the multitudes coming, when they saw them crowding around him, when we saw that they followed him, but verse they followed because of the signs, Jesus preached, Jesus teach, Jesus healed the sick. Getting the end of the day, he said, and he asked one of his disciples, he lifted up his eyes and he was testing that disciple. That's in, in chapter 6, verse 5. He says, Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread uh, that this may eat? Where shall we buy bread where this may eat? So he's pointing to, to them. Where shall we buy bread? And then his answer was, Philip, 200 denary worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. Now, we're talking about over 200 days of salary. But not only that, Jesus asked where, and his answer was how much. Isn't that what many times, and I, I was, I, I'm still meditating. Every time I go back to that script, the, the, those signs in the scripture, what is he really trying to say? Could it be that when we're going through some kind of need or something, that I, it, that's when our faith wavers? Could it be that when we have a need, it does not only finances, not only provision, not only I want to eat something. Could it be that through the need, we don't realize that he is truly our provider, in every way, in every area of our lives. Because he's asking a question where, and he's answering how much would cost. We're always concerned about the cost. We're not realizing that he is the provider. He is the one who can multiply. He is the one who turned water into wine. He is the one who healed those even who were not, you know, they were not even thankful. They were religious. They were bound by tradition. How can this be? So he is a provider that will provide for us. But the point is, hey, Jesus is here. Jesus can make a miracle. How can we learn? Because it's a process. Now, I mean, some of us, very few of us, we, we get it. You know, but sometimes we have this great faith for, you know, maybe for healing or great faith for financial breakthrough. But we our faith wavers in different aspects when, when we see this whole chapter. It's really talking about needs. It's really talking about what do you do when people crown around you? What are you sharing? What are you putting out? What are you doing for those when they come to see the signs? So one of the gospels says that Jesus said, go look, go look, go, go, go find out what you have. Again, a miracle will not take place unless you realize what you have in your hands. And they found this little guy, this little boy. They found a boy that was willing to share his meal. Could this be one of the lessons here? Could this be that sometimes we as adults, we don't share because we think it's not going to make any difference? Could it be, I mean, I, I can go even further. Could it be that people don't vote because they think it's not going to make a difference? Could it be that people don't voice their opinion? Could it be that people don't even want to go, don't even going to pray? Why even do that? Why even go to church? What difference is it making? Could it be, I mean, they don't realize that so little can make so much. So little can make an impact. It was, I mean, the emphasis there was a little guy with a little meal. Great multitude, great need. You see, he asked where. So did you see where you find the answer? 
in a kid's hand in someone that was not counted because they only counted men. But Jesus made sure that after that, no, 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 you're going to count everybody. In, it was in someone that was willing to share what he, the little guy, had. I love this passage. In, in fact, that Jesus didn't say, when they got that, said, well, you know, they were trying to, to show him, come on, just send them away. This is not enough. You know, Jesus didn't say, are you crazy? This is not enough. He took that. He thanked the Lord. He thanked the Lord for what they had. He made everyone sit down. He made everyone be counted in groups of 50 and groups of 100. Nobody's going to be left out. Men, women, and children. Everybody. Everybody. But then sitting down. Could this be another lesson? Could it be that like it's resting in times of need instead of getting desperate? Resting at his feet, resting at his word, resting at his presence, resting on the not only on the signs that he's able to perform healings, he's able to bring provision. He's able to feel your cravings. He's able to satisfy whatever it is. Jesus made sure that everyone was counted. Not no one was going to be left out. So then he, he comes from the hand of this little guy to the hands of Jesus. He prays, he breaks the bread, he breaks the fish, he gives to the disciples. The disciples feed the multitude. So it is in the sharing of what we have. It is in breaking of bread. It is through that process of breaking. I mean, breaking of bread. Does that sound, you know, something like familiar communion? The breaking of bread, the bread representing his body. The bread that was broken for us, the sacrifice, the suffering on the cross. Could it be that God is able to use the broken pieces? Could it be that God is able to use the broken parts in our lives to feed a multitude? But no, many times we're not willing to share. Many times we don't think it's going to make a difference. But not only that, the Word of God says that everybody, look, so when they were filled, the word says that likewise, they broke the bread as much as they wanted. I mean, if you had just a little bit, it's like, no, don't eat more than that because we, we need to feed this whole multitude. Everybody ate as much as they wanted. Different levels, different, different, I mean, you know, different capacity to eat some little, eat little, some much, but no. So we're talking about God's supernatural provision, God's supernatural way to feed people's hunger and thirst, to, to bless people beyond. I mean, that's, it has to be more than we see, more than we hear, more than we think. He's able to do exceedingly above more, all of that. So then he says, when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Even the leftovers, nothing should be lost. So he's going to use everything. He's going to use the little guy. He's going to use the disciples. He's going to use the multitude. He's going to use the signs. He's going to use the women. He's going to use the word. He's going to use what we share. He's going to use the broken pieces. He's going to use the leftovers. But we don't think like that. We think that he's just one way. And that's why we need to enlarge the way that we think. Because that's what he was trying to do. To break the mindset. The disciples. The way that they saw the things. If you don't break it. How can God do something new? That If you keep expecting and waiting for something to happen. The, the way that you always thought was right. Jesus comes. Break the mold. Break the walls of the church. I mean break everything. Oh come on. Let's get out of, outside of the box. So they gathered, and the Word of God says that they filled. So everybody was filled, and now the leftovers was enough to fill 12 baskets with fragments of the, of the barley loaves, uh, which were they left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, they said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. He's more than a prophet. He's more than a savior. He's more. He's more. He's a provider. He wants to provide for your needs. He wants to be the one. When you understand those signs that, that John, he pointed specifically. I do believe that life 
when you believe all that, when you see those things, you're going to have a great manifestation and you're going to feel the abundance of life that he wants to give you. I hope you're blessed today. Pastor Lake, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, open our eyes. Help us to see the little things. Not big things, not the crowd, not the multitude, but to see the little kid, to see the little meal, to see, Lord God, the things that you can use that we don't even realize it. To see, Lord God, that you can bring something great out of a little thing. In Jesus' name, you can bring something mighty, even, uh, uh, Lord, after the what is left. Because what is left is going to be enough to fill baskets. So, Lord, I pray today, bless us, help us to understand, help us not lose focus, help us not lose faith when we're going through any kind of need in the precious name of Jesus. Amen? Have a great day. Pastor Leif, love you. Bye now.